to turn this way, leave that, walk away from that. Condemnation includes punishment. And that could even just be the torment that, that is in your mind believing. Now, Paul is going to provide an answer for the hopeless situation um, in Romans 7. Okay, and we know the hopeless situation, the sin man trapped in sin. So prior to Romans 8, I thought it was very interesting. Prior to Romans 8, the Holy Spirit was only mentioned one time. So in Romans 8, excuse me, in Romans 8, the Holy Spirit is mentioned 19 times. Boy, that really is a shift 19 times from just one time in all the other chapters. So the only way to avoid sin is through the indwelling presence of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we cannot have that power in us until we are born again and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So what we could do, what we are unable to do in our own ability in a, is only accomplished with the power of the Holy Spirit. We are no longer slaves to sin and to death. Now, the law was not weak, but it's our flesh that was weak. God placed all of our condemnation on the flesh of Jesus Christ. Now, every Christian, and you know, Paul is really hitting these things home. So he kind of goes and repeats it in a different way. So I'm going to continue the same way every Christian has fulfilled the righteousness of the law in his spiritual man through Jesus. So that means we are righteous because of what happened on the cross with Jesus. So only those Christians who are under uh, the control of the spirit of God are fulfilling the spirit of the law in their actions. So we don't live according to the flesh because we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul talks about mind the things of the flesh. So those who walk after the flesh are focused on the carnal. Mind the things of the spirit. Those who walk, so we mind the things of the flesh, you're walking after the flesh, you're focused on that which is carnal. Mind the things of the spirit, those who walk after the spirit and who are focused on things of the spirit. His explanation, you know, he explains why only those who walk after the spirit are seeking the righteousness of the law fulfilled in their lives. So carnality, that which is carnal, is death. But that spirit, that which is of the spirit is life. John 6, 63, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. So that's, this goes back to we we've talked about before, and, and all of y'all know this, but there is power in our words. We are either blessing or we're convicting. I mean, blessing or cursing. We are speaking life or we are speaking death. So I'm going to read this again. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit in life. Now, all forms of death result from sin. So the word says we, the consequences of sin is death. So all forms of death result from sin, sickness, pauper, poverty, depression, loneliness, hatred, poverty, fear. All of these result from sin. So carnal is the Greek word flesh. So if anything that sin, all sin is carnal. But not all carnality is sin. I'm going to say that again. All sin is carnal. But not everything carnal is sin. So we're trying to live a Christian life from our own ability. Trying to live a Christian life in our own ability is carnal. 
but there's a difference between being in the flesh and after the flesh and in the spirit and after the spirit. So born again cannot be in the flesh, but we can walk after the flesh. So being born again cannot be in the flesh. We're not part of the flesh, but we can walk after the flesh. We do carnal things. We eat. We sleep. We dance. We run. So there are things we do that are carnal that are not sin. So all sin is carnal. But there are things we do that are carnal that are not sin. That's why we can be born again, but we can we can walk after the flesh, but we cannot be in the flesh. There's a difference. A lost person, okay, so the opposite of this, a lost person cannot be in the spirit. So it's the Greek word in, E-N, which denotes a fixed position. So you're sin, you're a sinner, you're in the flesh, you can't be over in the spirit because here we're, you're in a fixed position. But that's the same as you're born again, you're in a spirit, it's the same fixed position. So you can do things, eating and, and things like that, that are, are flesh, but you still are in the spirit. So the only way to please God is through being led by the Holy Spirit. And we all must receive Jesus to receive the Holy Spirit. We know that. So all Christians have a dead body because of sin. But the Spirit alive becomes righteousness. So we're either in this dead body, which is the sin body, so, or we're in this alive spirit because of righteousness. So Paul tells the believers that they will experience defeat if they continue to walk in the flesh. Now that's walk in the flesh, not do some things that are of the flesh. That's walking in the flesh. So in verse 13, the word mortify is the Greek word Thanatu, which means to kill. So mortify means to kill, self-denial, discipline one's body. So we know that we're a child of God because the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. How do we know we are a child of God? Because the spirit bears witness with us. So, you know, sometimes it's a tangible feeling. Okay. So there can be a tangible feeling. There can be a guidance from the Holy Spirit. Don't go there. Stop leading and telling us which way we should go. Give us direction. So there are different ways that we know that we are led by the Spirit of God, but it bears witness to us. We are a child of God because the Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit we know we know and we taught before we cannot be a child of the devil and a child of god at the same time if you're a child of the devil you're going to know that and you will not have the spirit of god in you so we are sons of god daughters of god by adoption with all the rights and all the privileges we're joint heirs now there is sometimes a price to be paid we're being identified with Jesus, suffering. We are starting to see more of that in the United States where pastors, for example, in Houston, took a stand against a law that would have allowed anyone, any sex, to go into a bathroom with young children. Now, I'm just, um, you know, just summarizing it, but they took a stand and, and they suffered. Uh, the mayor and the city council, um started demanding copies of their sermons they were ridiculed now that's minor compared to other people around the world that take a stand for jesus christ that will